in conversation with at if music 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 in front of a select audience we are honored to kick off proceedings with arguably England's greatest female jazz all-rounder Norma Winston welcome welcome nice to be here to know what kept you this side of the pond and if you have any regrets for not taking your sound to the United States. I don't have any regrets about that, about the fact that I didn't go and decide to live in the States. I, I'm English, I feel very English somehow, I mean the music I love is very sort of English elements and, um, and in looking for my own sound um, I discovered, you know, singing uh, music written by English people. This is actually how I discovered my way of singing and I suddenly realised I was singing more with an English accent than an American. And um, I think that then affected everything else I did when I went back to singing standards. I then, when I came to the, the an A, which might have been dance, which of course if you come from up north you'd sing dance anyway, but I wouldn't because I'm a Londoner. Um, then it, it made me think about actually whether it was me that was actually singing it or me pretending to be Ella Fitzgerald who was singing it. Um, of course, if I'd been gone to the States, I suppose I'd have, I'd have found my voice anyway. But I just, I, I, I feel very English somehow. My roots feel to be here and in, in, in our music, even though I was influence of course very heavily by the masters of, of jazz that I heard in the Miles Davis, John Coltrane. People. You trained originally as a pianist, am I correct, when you were younger? Yes, I, I learnt piano when I was about seven and a half. And did that have an influence, when you, did it have an influence on how you progressed as a singer? Did it have any bearing? It certainly had a bearing on the kind of jobs that I could get because um, when Michael Garrick asked me to join his group um, he had a, a front line of two saxophones and trumpet and I, I sat in sang, sang a couple of the songs that he'd given me to learn and he said oh just stay on and join in the next piece well the next piece had no words and it was a, just a one chord thing and so I, I improvised and um, he said would you like to join the band because one of the saxophone players is leaving and um, that was Jim Phillip um, and he left and so I took over his part but if I hadn't learnt piano I wouldn't have been able to read and so at the time of course jazz there was no jazz education so unless you learnt to play the piano but as a singer you probably couldn't read and most singers couldn't read but I could so I could sing those parts you see so that gave me a, a, a kind of a, an edge really um, and I plus the fact that I really wanted to sing something instrumental. Um, so that was, it was a great help. So you can talk about it. It's very hard, please. It's a different voice. Yeah, yeah completely. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had that experience. Wow, you sound younger. interesting here. You sound younger? Yeah. I was. Yeah. Now? Now. Hence the, time, <laughs> hence the timeless comment, exactly. I was listening to the chamber music and I oh, really yeah. enjoy Klaus Gessen's oh, yeah. um, woodwind. It's, you mentioned previously that you were born to the musicians and you want to make them happy, you want to write them and you to satisfy you they had a life. Were you aware of a lot of other singers who you thought were on a similar trajectory to, to you? At this, well, at that time. At, back, at this time, I'm thinking about people who are kind of fairly contemporaneous with yourself. You know. Well, the, I'm trying to think. There weren't many that. And people, I'm thinking about people in the like Flora Purim or people like that who were using. Oh, people always used to say, more, oh, remind me of Flora Purim, but I, I wasn't doing anything like Flora Purim. Right. Um, I was improvising a lot, which I don't know if she was doing. Which is, yeah, but she also did a lot of those vocal techniques. Yes, yeah. Like those kind of tech, you know, she yeah. used her voice instrumentally in that kind of way and used a lot of those sounds that are kind of a little bit outside yeah. the palette of the yes. regular jam yeah. scatter as well and things like that. I'm just thinking, 
you know, because I always thought, when I listened back to some of the things that you recorded, I thought, Norma was quite out there. She was doing things that were quite original for jazz singers, even, you know. Well, I don't know, I suppose, I, well, I was. I mean, I didn't really, there was only, in the free music, there was Maggie Nichols. Mm. Um, she came, she was at a concert I was doing mm. once with John mm. Stevens, and she said, oh, I, must, I want to sing this music. And so I introduced her to John, because at the time, I thought, well, John Stevens says, I, mm. I, I just didn't really, I delved a bit into mm -hmm. free music, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have much of the vocabulary mm. for it, you mm. know, uh, like sounds and mm. things like that. And mm. I, I really love harmony and time, mm. so I mm. wasn't that mm. interested. I like, I like to use free elements in what I'm doing, but I like it to be going somewhere mm. or, mm. or, or coming out of a free mm. thing into a piece or going into something free but just to do a free piece on its own you know it, it doesn't yeah, yeah. didn't appeal it to me many here, I <laughs> no it has to toe the melodic line yeah. somewhere <laughs> it has to be well Norman, thank you Norman, so thank much you for so taking much, time so out and coming so to visit so us here so at If so Music so much, and giving so us a small insight into your 40 plus year career in jazz 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 jazz, jazz. We're all looking forward to seeing you perform Mirrors at King's Cross on the 25th of May.